Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in this video I'm going to teach you three learning points to help you understand the link between joint actions and muscle contractions ready so you can ace your anatomy exam. By the end of this video you're going to be able to understand the fundamentals of joint actions and the fundamentals of muscle contractions so that you can put these both together for the most complex of exam questions that combine these. And also there is a download for you at the end that will allow you to keep practicing how these joint actions and muscle contractions come together in preparation for your exam. Learning point number one, flexion and extension. So there are many joint actions that you need to know ready for your exam, however, Flexion and extension make up a large portion of those because they're actions that we use very regularly in the sagittal plane. So, how can you differentiate between these and help remember them? What I want you to do is to stand up and have your feet facing forwards and your hands down by your side with your palms facing forwards. Now this position right now, with your hips fully extended, you are in full extension. If you notice, if you just squeeze your bum a little bit as well, that is extension of your hips. Your knees are extended in that position. Your elbows are extended. Your shoulders are also in extension where they're down by your side. Your spine is in extension. So everything is in extension. Now, as conversely to this, you've also got flexion that you need to remember. Now the opposite to this position is to actually curl up in a fetal position, but actually lift your arms up a little bit higher. So think fetal position, for flexion. Now in this fetal position, if you're doing this here with me, think about your hips being flexed. That's flexion. Flexion of the knee, flexion of the elbow, and flexion of your spine as you're curling over. But you've also got flexion of your shoulders. Now true flexion of the shoulders is taking your arms up overhead. So that's the only one that can get a little bit tricky. But as a bog standard rule, extension is when you're elongated, arms by your side, Flexion is when you're curled up in a fetal position and also flexion for shoulders is arms overhead. Learning point number two, muscle fibre direction. So it's fair enough being able to understand the joint actions, but you need to also know what muscles are responsible for those joint actions. So the best way to do this is to get a really clear image of the muscle that includes the origin, the insertion, the shape of the muscle and some real clear line of fibre. Now that line of fibre is the striations where all of your muscle fibres line up. And for example, on a bicep, you can see that they go vertically down the arm. So this line of fibre, imagine that each line is tug of war and you've got a little team on either side and as they pull the rope, they pull either side, either team, get pulled closer to the middle. So they can, condense or get shorter along the line of fibre. So if you've got these lines, they can get shorter and they can lengthen. And that's what you need to really think about when you're thinking about muscle fibre direction and joint actions. For example, you could have the bicep and you can look at that muscle fibre go running down the bicep itself. But if you think about each end getting closer to each other, even if you don't know the wording of that origin and insertion, you can think about, well, one of them is this side of the elbow and one of them is up here, so if they got closer together, it would make me bend my elbow. So that's how you can use the muscle fibre direction information to help break down and understand what joint action may happen. Learning point number three, concentric and eccentric contractions. So you know about joint actions, you know about flexion extension, you know that there are lines of fiber within the muscle. But what you now need to know is that that same muscle can get shorter and it can get longer. Now these are two different types of contractions that happen in the muscle. And you need to be aware of these differences ready for your exam. So the first one is concentric. Now concentric contraction is kind of the contraction that most people think of when they think of a muscle contracting the whole muscle gets shorter. And as it has an attachment at one end, on one bone, and an attachment at the other end, now think of that like that um, tug of war we were talking about. You've got a team on one end and a team on the other end, and as they pull together, the muscle gets shorter. It collapses, and think of that tug of war, that gap in the middle gets shorter, the teams get closer together, and the joint action that occurs 
in this case for the bicep is going to be flexion of the elbow you get a joint action happen as a result of concentric contraction and the muscle shortening good way to remember that is think c for concentric contraction and that relates to c for collapsing or condensing the muscle it's getting shorter now for eccentric contraction this is exactly the opposite it means it starts in that tight closed position and we elongate our muscle out so it gradually lengthens now an eccentric contraction is the lengthening of the muscle which means you get another joint action happen this time it's the reverse of what you've just had for the concentric so you need to be aware that concentric is the shortening of the muscle eccentric contraction is the lengthening of the muscle now you know the fundamentals of joint action and of muscle contractions let's test your knowledge this mock question is from a level 3 anatomy mock question so it's going to prepare you for level 3 anatomy and physiology exam here's the question which joint action occurs when the rectus abdominis contracts concentrically is it a hip extension b hip flexion c spine flexion d spine extension now what i'd like to do is to take your time have a little think and then pop your answer in the comments box below if you would like to pause this video whilst you take a little bit longer to really work it through and work out what the answer is then please go ahead and do so now so i'm going to share with you the answer the answer is c spine flexion so spinal flexion is what happens when the rectus abdominis contracts so concentrically so how do you break this down first of all the question says which joint action so you know you're looking for a joint action occurs when the rectus abdominis contracts concentrically so you've got your three points in there that you need to know about first of all rectus abdominis get a really good clear image in your mind about what the rectus abdominis is where it is and also the line of fiber and really think to yourself okay if those done that line of fiber got close together and pulled either ends to get towards each other what action would happen now remember we're talking about a concentric contraction so this is the muscle fiber getting shorter if it asked for eccentric it would be talking about it getting longer so in this case the answer is spine flexion if you do get confused by any of these please do pop your questions in the comments box below if you found it really beneficial to use this mock question to make sure that you've learned everything you need to, then you can download another 101 mock questions by clicking the link that's with this video and you can get instant access to it. Now, I would love to hear from you. So please do leave a comment at the bottom of this video just telling us what is the joint action that you find you get most confused with. Please do leave a comment there and also if you've enjoyed this video then please hit the little thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to share with your friends. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.